Hello students. Today we are going to study a poem Where do all the teachers go? In this poem, the poem speaks about a child's love and curiosity for his or her teacher. Teachers are just next to the super being for children. They can't imagine that teachers are also ordinary human beings. So let us start the poem. Where do all the teachers go? The poem is Where do all the teachers go? This poem we can see the child poet wonders that his teachers are like. It is difficult for him to think that his teachers are ordinary persons living like common people. So he wonders where the teachers go at 4 o'clock after the school. Do they live in ordinary houses doing the petty uh, jobs like washing and cleaning? The child poet wants to know if these teachers were also born like ordinary children and were bad as children often are, he wonders if they also made mistakes in spellings and were punished. The teachers seems to be very perfect. The child thinks that perhaps these teachers never lost their books as he does or wore unclean clothes like some children. He intends to follow one of his teachers someday when the teachers go home and find out the truth. He will then write it in a poem which the teachers can read out to other children in the class. This poem is written by Peter Dixon. Before going to read and explain the poem, I would like to discuss about Peter Dixon. Peter Dixon is a poet, performer, educa educationalist and artist. He grew up in the London during the Blitz and readily admits to being a rather naughty boy whose schooling was far, far from successful. Having failed at the spellings and understanding of word, form and gra grammar, he tended to write secretly at home, drawing and writing of the things largely ignored by schools. Many of Peter's paintings draw upon childhood experiences and have developed a cult following with a number of the galleries in London and the south of England showcasing his distinctive work on a regular basis. His style is strong, bold and imaginative. With vivid use of the color and loose brush strokes, he also produces unique sculpture made from the unwanted trinklets and odds and ends. More or less by ancient, Peter became a school teacher and eventually a senior lecturer in education. Still, my still fit as to how all, he, all his of this happened. Over the course of the last 30 years, Peter has been a full-form children writer and educational consultant. His first book was published in 1978 and he has written and painted fairly steadily ever since. Whilst living in Winchester, Hempfire with his family and tortoises. He has contributed to over 100 poetry anthologies and had seven collection of his own work published by the Macmillan including Grow Your Own Poems, Lost Property and Peter Dixon's Grand Prix of the Poetry. A hugely entertaining keynote and after dinner speaker Peter's experiences 
outlook and style of delivery are guaranteed to captivate audience and generate many talking points amidst a range of poems and anecdotes he blasts a stream of the ideas geared to inspire the willing and the enthuse the weary sometimes contentious invariably amusing and a highly experienced with appearances at event and conferences across the globe his thought provoking opinions are presented in a positive manner and invaluable to anyone working in the teaching profession the poem where do all the teachers go is written by peter dickson from the point of view of a small child to a child his or her teacher is special and different from the students the teacher does not do all that a student does so the child wonders what the teacher does when the classes are over at 4 pm he or she wants to know that answers to many questions like whether they too go home or watch tv like the child does also the kid is interested in knowing if the teacher also washes his or her socks or lives with parents the child also wonders if the teacher has ever been a kid and has been punished he or she also wants to know if the teacher has ever scribbled on the desk or the lost a book these are many more unanswered question in the mind of the child to find out the answers the child decided to follow the teacher back home one day and make a note of what is happening the kid then innocently said that he or she will make a poem of the teacher's activity to everyone to read so let's move to the poetry for a child little child a teacher is special it is difficult for a small child to think of his or her teacher as an ordinary person where do all teachers go when it's 4 o'clock do they live in houses and do they wash their socks do they wear pajamas and do they watch tv and do they pick their noses the same as you and me do they live with other people have their mums and dads and were they were ever children and were they ever bad did they ever never spell right did they ever make mistakes were they punished in the corner if they pinched the chocolate flakes did they ever lose their him books did they ever leave their greens did they scribbles on the desk tops did they wear old dirty jeans i'll follow one back home today i'll find out what they do then i'll put it in a poem that they can read to you now i am going to explain the poem stanza wise where do all the teachers go when it's 4 o'clock do they live in houses and do they wash their socks the child wonders and questions where all the teachers go after the school hours when it is 4 o'clock he wants to know if like any other ordinary being they also live in houses and wash their socks means do they also do all the routine work like other people now let's move to the next stanza do they wear pajamas and do they watch tv and do they pick their noses the same as you are and me now here you can see pajamas pajama is used for clothes picks their noses 
means an activity to waste time. Poking and inserting. Fingers in the nose to clear boogers means dried mucus. Now here the child wants to know if teachers also wear clothes like pajamas in the night or all the time and watch TV like them. Do they also clean their noses the way other people do and waste their time? Now let's move to the ne next stanza. Do they live with other people? Have they mums and dads? And were they ever children? And were they ever bad? Now here the poet says Further, the child wonders by asking if they are also surrounded by people, if they also have parents and children like us to live with. Did they commit any mistakes or did anything wrong when they were children? Now, next parent, next exchange, did they ever never spell right? Did they ever make mistakes? Were they punished in the corner if they pinched the chocolate flakes? Now here the poet, little poet asking, now he wants to know if they also made mistake or were ever punished for stealing chocolates or doing any silly or naughty things. Did they ever lose their hymns? Hymn books. Did they ever leave their greens? Did they scribble on the desktops? Did they wear old dirty jeans? Now again, the child wonders about teachers. Scribbling means draw or write something that is not readable. The tender mind is also bothered to know if their teachers also ever lost their religious books and said no to green vegetable? Did they also waste time by scribbling on the tables and wear torn and old jeans? Are they doing this? He, he wondering. I'll follow one back home today. I'll find out what they do. Then I'll put it in a poem that they can read to you. Now the child is very curious about the teachers. So to overcome his curiosity, the child decides to follow or spy his teacher on his way home after school. Once he is clear about everything, he would also like to compose or write a poem about it and thinks that the teacher would read that poem to his students. Now this is, this poem is about the curiosity of the child about the teacher. And for young kids, a teacher is an extraordinary special person. It is difficult for a small child to accept that a teacher is also any common man or woman living around him. The child wonders and questions if teachers also behave like other people, if they also do all the work or things other people do, like do they live in houses, do they wear pajamas, wash socks, uh, so socks or watch TV, do they also have parents and children to live with. All these questions bother a child's mind and out of curiosity, one day the child decides to follow his teacher to keep a check and to write a poem about them. So that the teacher read the poem to their students. It shows the cuteness, purity and curiosity and dilemma a young child has for his teachers. It also shows their expectation from teachers. Now, let's move to the working with the poem. Answer these questions. 
the first question is why does the poet want to know where the teacher go at 4 o'clock so the answer you can write from the poem where do all the teachers go when it's 4 o'clock do they live in houses and do they wash their socks the poet wants to know this because he has a curiosity to know if his teachers are also an ordinary human being are they having family are they watching tv are they uh, washing their socks so these are the curiosity always in the child mind so he wanted to know he wants to know this because he has a curiosity to know if his teachers are also ordinary human beings now let's move to the second question what are the things normal people do that the poet talks about now let's see this answer in the from the poem the things done by the normal people are wearing clothes wasting time losing religious books stealing chocolates having parents and children washing clothes watching tv etc now here we can see uh, in this poem wash their socks wear pajamas watch tv pick their noses dad and mums children so these are all simple things or you can say very general things the teacher are doing so the things by done by normal people are wearing clothes wasting time losing religious books now in the last stanza you can find uh, losing the hymns books so losing religious books stealing chocolates having parents children washing clothes watching tv etc these are the simple things the teacher is or normal things the poet wanted to uh, see he wants to ask what are the things the normal people do that the poet talks about now let's move to the third question the third question is what does he imagine about where teachers live what they do at home the people with whom they live their activities when they were children in the school so these are the questions and we have to solve this so what does he imagine a child what type of imagination about the teacher where teachers live now he imagines if the teachers live in a house the second where they do at home what they do at home he imagines if they also wash their clothes and watch tv at home the people with whom they live he imagines if they also have parents and children to live with them and the d is their activity when they were children in school he imagines if they also did mischiefs and were punished so these are the things he imagines about the teacher and we can see in the poem also now the first answer he imagine if the teacher live in the houses so here you can see answer do they live do they live in the houses and the second he imagines if they also wash their clothes and watch tv and third he imagines if they also have parents and children to live with them
in this lines you can see this answer and fourth answer he imagine if they also did mischiefs and were punished now let's see the answer is given in the poem were they punished in the corner if they pinch the chocolate flakes these are the things the teacher the poets imagine about the teacher now let's move to the next question the fourth question is why does the poet wonder if teachers also do things that other people do now here you can see he wonders because his tender mind considers teacher as a super being or god like creature teacher is a idol for him so he can't imagine beyond because the tender minds also having a concept about teacher that the teacher is considered next to god and naturally it considered as a super being or god like creature so he wonder if teacher also do things that other people do so that's the point now let's move to the fifth question how does the poet plan to find out what will he do once he finds out now we can see in the poem i'll follow one back home today i'll find out what they do then i'll put it in a poem that they can read to you the poet plans to find out whether teachers are ordinary human being by spying or following them on their way home after school hours once he finds out he will write a poem now answer you can you can find in this last paragraph so the poet plans to find out the whether teachers are ordinary human being by spying or following them on their way home after school hours once he finds out he will write a poem so teachers will also can read this book this poem now let's move to the next question what do you think these phrases from the poem mean punished in the corner leave their greens now we we'll just find out these lines in the poem here we can see punished in the corner and the next line is leave their greens punished in the corner means to get punishment after doing a mischief the poet wonders about that the teacher were they punished in the corner it means the teacher get punished after doing a mischief and the second word is leave their greens leave their greens means to not to eat green vegetable as the other children are doing they are not very uh, interested to eat green vegetable they want to, to eat junk foods and other which is very delicious so they don't want to eat green vegetables so here the poet also wonders about the teachers the teachers means to not to eat green vegetables so the word 
the sentence is written or the phrase you can say is written over here leave their greens or the punish in the corner punished in the corner means to get punished after doing a mischief and leave their greens means to not to eat green vegetables questions we can write what does the poet wonder the answer we can write the poet wonders if teachers also did the same things as others because he had always seen them as teachers they were strict well behaved and clean they knew everything did not make mistakes and scolded the students when they made mistakes now next question is do all the teachers go now answer we can write the child wonders and questions where all the teachers go after the school hours when it is 4 o'clock he wants to know if like any other ordinary being they also live in houses and wash their socks mean do they all do all the routine work like other people now what does the poet want to know from the where do all teachers go by peter dickson according to the poet where do all the teachers go the poem where do all the teachers go is written by peter dickson from the point of view of a small child to a child his or her teacher is special and different from the student the teacher does not do all that a student does so the child wonders what the teacher does when the classes are over at 4 pm if we will write a summary of this poetry so we can write like this he imagines if the teachers live in houses he imagines if they also wash their clothes and watch tv at home he imagines if they also have parents and children to live with them he imagines if they also did mischiefs and were punished so in this way you can write the summary of the poem and the poet wonders if teachers also did the same things as others because he had always seen them as teachers they were strict well behaved and clean and they scold scolded every time so and the teachers also so these are the things a poet have seen if we will ask to write the central idea so we central idea of this poem so we can write the child wonders if his teachers also do things as other people do he wants to know about him he follows a teacher to his home and notes his activity then he will write a poem about it so this way we can write the central idea of this poem where do all the teachers go by peter where do all, where do all the teachers go by peter dixon where do all the teachers go when it's 4 o'clock do they live in houses and do they wash their socks do they wear pajamas And do they watch TV? And do they pick their noses <laughs> the same as you and me? Do they live with other people? Have they moms and dads? And were they ever children? And were they ever bad? Did they ever 
never spell right? Did they ever make mistakes? Were they punished in the corner if they pinched the chocolate flakes? Did they ever lose their hymn books? Did they ever leave their greens? Did they scribble on the desktops? Did they wear old dirty jeans? I'll follow one back home today. I'll find out what they do. Then I'll put it in a poem that they can read to you. Now write some words and their meanings. Pajamas. Hair is used for clothes. Pick their noses. Means an activity to waste time. Poking and inserting finger in the nose to clear boogers means dried mucus. Scribbling means draw or write something that is not readable. That is called scribbling. Next word is hymn. Hymn means a religious song or poem of a praise to God or a God. Next word is pinched. Pinch means tense and pale from cold, worry or hunger. Now we have to write. First word is pajamas and pick their noses and then is scribbling. And then him. And last word is pinched. So everybody should write this in your copy before writing the poem. After the reading and explanation of this poem, we can find that the child wonders and questions where all the teachers go. After the schools are, when it is four o'clock, he wants to know if like any other ordinary being, they also live in house and wash their socks, means do they also do all the routine work like others. And at the last, he his curiosity was uh, too much and he followed the teacher. And then he find all the answers. So this is the poetry. Where do all the teachers go? For that's all today. Everybody must write all the exercises in the copy. And complete this poem. So bye bye. Take care.